This is Duke University. The first thing I want to do is to thank Jay and Sarah for inviting me to be a part of this. And uh, I also want to just express my deep respect for Nate and Ed and to say how honored I am to be um, sharing a stage with them. Um, I'm just uh, following um, the template set by Ed, just make a few comments about um, the idea of out. And to say, um, I will read a, a little bit from Zong, uh, that every time I perform Zong, I feel as if I'm outing myself. <laughs> uh, as a closet. Former closet, uh, spiritual Baptist, <laughs> you'll see what I mean. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, but in thinking about um, this particular little presentation before we get into the conversation, I, I realize that this idea of the outdoors has been uh, troubling me ever since I began writing. And today, as we were waiting, Ed and myself and Aretha, before we came in here, we're having a coffee, and I was saying to Ed, in response to whether I had prepared or what had I prepared, I said, you know, it all began in the Caribbean, um, where we learned about fog and um, daffodils, those bloody daffodils, um, and we learned absolutely nothing about the land around us. I uh, shared with him the fact that on my way to school, I would walk past a tree called the Pui tree. Some of you may know it. It's a hardwood, grows very tall. And every March, April, this tree um, blossomed. The one that I saw was yellow and it shed its blossoms. And so for about a week to 10 days, you walked across this carpet of yellow. Um, but none of that was a part of what we uh, were taught. Um, so that began some of this questioning. And as I said at lunch, you know, even when I, when I talk about it or at tea, um, I can feel the tears because uh, the island I come from is so astonishingly beautiful. And questions every time I visit, I, I think of whether our ancestors, those enslaved Africans, ever saw that beauty. Were they able to? It's this whole idea. I actually wrote a play, Coos and Calypsos, in which it's a, a three-hander, in which this, the husband is looking out to the sea and uh, he's, um, he's a romantic, uh, he studied um, that area of literature and he's calling his ex-wife to come and look at the four or five different shades of blue that he can see. And she is much more concerned about the politics of what's happening and so on on the island. So it's this, this tension that is always there that is created for me when I go into th that environment. But the irony is that so many of those iconic um, mm, flora and fauna are not actually from the Caribbean. Um, the breadfruit, the coconut tree, mango trees, all those things, those are imports. So there are all these layers to what, to what the outdoors um, actually means for me as a transplanted person in the new world. And irony of ironies, whenever I go there, and this is a, a huge area for me, as a woman, the outer space is always very gendered for me. And as crime has mounted in the Caribbean, and certainly in Trinidad, which is a transshipment point from Venezuela for drugs, virtually you, uh, you, know, you go from wherever you're going to work, to your car, to, to your home. And so that outer space has become so 
um, restricted for women in particular, uh, the only time that they're able to be out and to express sexuality is at times like carnival. Um, and I've written about that. I'll mention those very, very briefly. Now, irony of ironies is that I live in Canada, um, where, where I live in Toronto. It's somewhat safe. I don't think one is safe anywhere, really. But um, certainly, I can go out to a corner store and put my door on the latch and not worry about it. But in that space, First Nations women who are from that land, as some of you may know, it, over a thousand, those are the recorded ones, women have gone missing and or are murdered. So, that, you know, there are these ironies in terms of how this, this hydra-headed beast, colonialism, has actually organized these spaces. It's the same um, condition that, uh, that creates in me the fear for my moving through that outer space in Trinidad and Tobago to a lesser degree that makes it an unsafe space for the original inhabitants of Canada where I happen to feel safer than they can. So those are some of the, those are some of the complexities. And, and um, also when I, when I think of, uh, I think it was something that Nate said, that when I think of the outer space, I think of this idea of moving and mo the black body moving through space and how that has always been restricted um, and I'll just reference a, a couple of essays uh, um, that appear in a book I have called um, A Genealogy of Resistance, Earth and Sound, where I'm making an attempt between the land and language. And, and can, can that outer land generate a language for someone like myself who does not have a mother tongue, so to speak? Um, there's another piece I wrote which deals with this issue of gender called displace, the space between, in which I, I start from the idea that when women ask whether it is safe to go somewhere, um, usually somewhere out, what they're asking is how safe is that inner space? The cunt. Um, will I get raped? It's not, I mean, maybe there's a lesser fear where my bag gets stolen. And so what I explore in that essay is how the black woman is brought to the new world for that inner space to keep, and those historians will probably know of this, you, that the documents are there where it's recommended to bring them so that they can pacify the enslaved African male so that they won't run. And then there's a, there's a sense in which the, Afri the female African body is being harvested in the same way that the outer space is being colonized and harvested. Um, and then there's a piece I have, um, uh, you know, uh, just before I go on, in, 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 in that particular piece, I was always very interested in this aspect. When I was growing up, my mother would say to me, if I was loud, don't be so loud, you sound like a jamet. <laughs> and um, what she meant, the, the jamet referred to a class of women who were on the street. They weren't necessarily prostitutes, but they had Groups, one group was called the Don't Give a Dams. <laughs> Another group was called, um, uh, the name is going to escape me. But they, their terrain was the street, and that really fascinated me to think that there were women at one point who actually were on the street. And they had these marvelous names like um, Big Body Ada. Um, <laughs> if I look at the essay later on, you can ask me, I'll, I'll, I'll find some of them. And so I was really interested in how these women, you know, were able to occupy that, that terrain that is traditionally the terrain of men. Um, uh, there's a piece I have in which I look at that um, a carnival in Toronto, Caribana, which is always, you know, historically, this particular festival, which is based on the carnival in Trinidad, has been moved around the city, and there are always these concerns about safety and 
the threat of black bodies, a collectivity of black bodies in space. And in that piece, I also look at this idea of women at one point being able to be on the street in skimpy costumes, flaunting their sexuality. It's the one time that this is possible, both in Trinidad and in Toronto. Um, there is another piece I have, which is called Not Waving. Uh, um, there's a ravine in Toronto that I walk in virtually every day, and it, it's part of uh, my ritual, I suppose, around writing. And uh, a few years ago, I was there and witnessed a man jumping off a bridge and killing himself. Uh, and, and so that created a whole other um, area where I began to think of how events can actually change a space for you and how the event of enslavement or genocide for First Nations people, how that has changed these spaces. I could not go back to the ravine for about five years and promise myself I would only go when I was able to write about it. And finally, just a few, um, two comments. Um, I was talking to Jay last night about this, the spiritual Baptists or converted as they're called in St. Vincent. These are people who practice um, a syncretic religion, Christian and African. Um, we have, in Trinidad they call, they used to be called Shouter Baptists, they're spiritual Baptists now. They were outlawed because the religion was seen as having too many Africanisms. In St. Vincent, what is fascinating, they have a practice in which when they go into trance, although some people I have read don't necessarily have to go into trance, they travel. And they travel to foreign lands and they learn skills and they're able to employ those skills in their, in their everyday lives. And I thought of that as a really interesting experience, uh, example of how the diasporic African has been able to manage and to act to, there's no, there's no end to out, that even though they may be restricted in terms of material conditions, are able to, um, to, to break through that. I heard, I looked at Fred's, um, uh, the first presentation here, and Fred mentioned um, something about um, Africans flying, that myth. We have that myth in Tobago too. And my mother tells me that People said that every Friday, Kwashi flew back to Africa, do you know? Um, and I think there's more to it just being a myth. I think there's something very profound going on there. And uh, finally, um, this Zong. Um, I had the pleasure to, uh, for the first time two months ago to be on a sailing ship and actually for the first time really experience the sea. I, it was an overnight trip experience the ocean in a way that I never have before. We in the Caribbean are very afraid of the ocean. We say things like, um, the sea has no back door. <laughs> or if you swim on the Atlantic side, make sure and take your passport. Um, things like that, because um, I think it has to do with a certain kind of collective memory of what the sea has meant for us. But it was quite uncanny and profound to see the awesomeness. I, it was a little catamaran of, this, of, of the ocean. And to think that some people, and of course this links with what uh, Nate and Ed have talked about, like the roads, you know, traveling. The sea is this huge, uh, the middle passage, this huge highway. But to think that some people actually thought that that was preferable than finishing the journey. And as I was sharing with Sarah last night, thinking of the contemporary situation of primarily, predominantly Africans and some Asians crossing the Mediterranean, thinking of things as basic as where do they put their waste if a ship is supposed to have maybe 12 people but you have 100 on board. Um, but I thought of Zong as a... As a as a manifestation of this idea of the out, because it seemed to me when I, when I, uh, yeah, um, experienced the ocean, it seemed to be the ultimate 
of um, experiences. Um, I, I understand what the word awesome now means. It is so vast. Um, the one is humbled before it. And so on that note, I'm just going to do a, a, a short performance of Zong for you. Um, as I say, I out myself every time I do this, and I'm never sure quite what will happen. No, we don't, we don't really have to move. Um, what can I say? Uh, um, I'm not able to follow the time. When I'm done with this, can you feel free? To, I, you know, we have 20 minutes, I think you said. So ring, ring this bell, and I will stop fairly shortly after is what I'm saying. No, but from, for me now. Okay. <laughs> so I'm not sure where I'll put it down, but just don't feel free to just do it, really. Um,
Zong, number five. Off, water, rains, and dead. The more, off, the more, off, Negroes, off, water, and weeks, three less than rains, wasabi, No Musa Oshé Ibishoke Abiona and water three but Good of sea and perils of water one day water. Water, day one of months of weeks of days of Sustenance lying, lying dead. Off, off, sustenance lying dead. Mohammed, Moloko, September, Hat, 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 Hadiya, Underscope, in sinful, thy days for ninety nine, forty six, this for forty sins, j, j, fam, j, fam, j, fam, god of spire, space, and God of spire, space, and <laughs> raise, turn, and turn the bow. 
Liz, sing, sing, sing a song, sing a song, sing a song. Gafwa, gafwa, te a what? Sing a song, sing a song, sing a song. Gafwa, gafwa, te a what? Eh, so, mm, sing, the song, sing, the song, the. Fend the duck. Ed and sin. Mm, oh, sin, sin. Mm, oh, sin, sin. Mm, and sin, sin. Mm, and sin, sin. Sing a song. Sing a song. Sing a song. Of what? Of what? Of what? Of what? Of what? Of what? Terra what? Terra what? Terra what? And so sing the song, sing the song day. Fend the dead, fend the dead, and sing. Oh, sing, sing. Oh, sing, sing. Oh, sing, sing. Oh, sing, sing. Gazabo, gazabo, nespo, me wakbo, il mabo, onza, I'll do the Why forty we excom tot, excom tot, um, shh, 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 here, can you not hear? Can you not hear? Can you not hear? Ness sing a song, Ness sing a song, 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 sing a song. Sing a song, 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 sing a song. Sing a song, 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 sing a song. Sing a song, 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 sing a song. Thank you.